and welcome to episode 1 of Sarastro's Descent painting series. In these videos we'll be painting miniatures from Fantasy Flight's Descent Journeys in the Dark 2nd edition, beginning with the base set hero Sindrael. Aimed at the beginner painter, this video will explore simple, easy to follow steps that should allow anyone to access the hobby and produce results that will look great on the tabletop. For details concerning brushes and paints, please refer to the video description below. Let's now look at the steps we'll be using to paint our first hero from Descent Journeys in the Dark. We'll prepare the miniature by removing any mould lines and priming the figure with a white spray-on primer. We'll then apply bright neat base colours along with some simple dry brushing for the armour and shield. Next we'll apply some dark washes to create some depth. We'll then add some highlights along with some finishing touches, which will include some optional basing ideas. Let's begin. First, we check for any mould lines and carefully cut or scrape them away with a craft knife. Next, we need to prepare the surface for painting with a primer. For my heroes, I've chosen a white spray-on primer, and I'm using Citadel's Corax White, which is actually an off-white light grey. A couple of light sprays should provide good coverage without causing any loss of detail. Once the primer is dry, we're ready to apply the base colours. We'll begin by painting all of the golden areas of the miniature. For that, I'm using Citadel's Retributor armour. We nearly always mix in a couple of drops of water to thin the paint, in order to achieve a consistency that won't destroy the details on the miniature. We now paint all of the gold-coloured armour and the shield. Even a single coat of this gives us a beautifully rich bright golden colour, but a second thin layer may be needed to create a truly solid finish. Once that's dry, we're going to apply a dry brush to pick out the highlights. To do this I'm using Citadel's Golden Griffin, which has a thick dry consistency, but this can be done with any shade of light gold you like. Using a large flat brush we collect some paint then wipe most of it off, before lightly brushing the miniature repeatedly until we have a look we're happy with. What we're looking for here is the brighter tone being picked up by the raised surfaces and edges, whilst the recesses should remain untouched. The reason we're adding this dry brush highlight now rather than in the highlighting stage is simply because it's a slightly messy technique, and at this stage we don't need to worry about hitting the other areas of the miniature, as they've yet to be painted. Dry brushed highlights usually give a slightly rough finish, which may not be ideal for smoother textures like fabric, but is okay if you're looking for a simple but effective approach to painting armour. With the dry brushing complete, we can now paint the remaining parts of the figure. For the gloves, I'm using Avaland Sunset, once again thinned with a little water. For all of these base colours, two or three layers may be needed to produce a strong, even tone. For the areas of green fabric, I'm using Sybarite Green. The leggings have a more bluish look, so I'm creating an equal mix of Sybarite Green and Sotek Green. I generally work with a size 1 brush, but might switch to a size 0 for more detailed work. For the skin, I'm using a Kislev Flesh, which is quite a pale skin tone. Mm -hmm. 
I'm now using some Screaming Skull for the hair. This may seem a little pale, but the colour will change significantly when we add the dark wash in the next stage. Finally, I'm using some Runefang steel for the sword. With all of the base colours neatly applied, we're ready to do some shading. We'll now apply a series of dark washes to begin creating some contrast. I'm starting with some Celia Green shade for the clothing. All of these washes need a good shake before using and are simply applied neat to the areas we want to shade. We're using this shade for all of the blue-green areas of fabric. We can see here what a nice job the wash does of darkening those recesses down. We should try not to load too much wash onto the brush to avoid flooding the miniature. Next, I'm using some Reichland Flesh Shade for the skin. We might want to apply some additional shade around the eyes, nose and mouth areas, as well as beneath the chin to gently strengthen the shadows. For the armour and shield I'm going to create an equal mix of Agrax Earthshade and Cassandora Yellow, using three large brushfuls of each. This should give us the required level of depth in the shadows, but also help to strengthen the warm, golden look of the metalwork. We can also shade the gloves with this mix. And the hair as well. This should produce a beautiful golden blonde colour with just enough contrast and depth in the recesses. Additional shade may be added selectively to further darken the shadowed areas and accentuate the form. Finally, I'm using an equal mix of Nuln Oil with some Agrax Earthshade for the sword. The addition of the brown is to give the sword a slightly warmer, tarnished finish. To add some interest here, I'm going to apply around three layers of this wash, reducing the area I'm covering to create a build-up of shade the closer we get to the cross guard. We let the previous layer dry before adding the next, but it shouldn't take long to build up a nice bit of contrast along the edge of the blade. Once the shades are dry, we're ready to add some highlights. We're going to begin by highlighting the green fabric. Since the washes we've just added have darkened the miniature, our first layer of highlight can simply be a reapplication of the base colour, in this case, Sybarite Green. I'm going to thin the paint slightly more than I did when I applied it as a base colour, so that it has a semi-translucent quality which will allow us to achieve smoother transitions. We're now highlighting most of the raised parts of the fabric, but leaving the darker recesses untouched.
Here on the cloak, I'm building up the highlights in two or three thin layers. Now we're going to lighten the colour with the addition of a little white. This lighter highlight now wants to cover a smaller area within the highlights we've already added, focusing on the most raised peaks in the fabric and the tops of the shoulders, since these are the places we expect would catch the most light. Additional white may be added to boost the highlights further. Giving the brush a small twist on some paper, or your hand even, can help maintain a nice pointed tip. The lighter the highlight, the smaller the area we want to hit. Here I'm using the side of the brush to add an easy bit of edge highlighting to the cloak. We're now going to repeat this process for the leggings, starting with a reapplication of the original Sybarite and Sotec green mix. And once again, we can simply add some white to produce a lighter tone for the smaller, most raised parts of the fabric, as well as the edges. Additional white can be added to lighten the highlights further. For the skin, we can reapply some thinned Kislev flesh, taking care to avoid the areas we want to remain shadowed, such as the eye sockets, the lips, and the areas under the nose and under the chin. Two thin layers should give us a smooth, solid finish. We can then add a small amount of white to provide a lighter, gentle highlight, focusing on the forehead, cheekbones, and the top of the nose. Since the armour and shield have already received a dry brush, you might not feel the need to give them any further highlights. If you do, a roughly equal mix of Retributor armour with a lighter shade of gold, like Liberator Gold, should give you the right tone to add a few additional highlights, and give a little extra emphasis to the brightest parts of the armour and shield. We might also like to build a little extra depth with the addition of another layer or two of our yellow-brown shade to further darken the shadows and strengthen the form. Here you can see I've given the shield some added dimension 
by giving additional highlights to the left side whilst I've shaded down the right side. For the gloves, we can provide a reapplication of Avalon Sunset. Followed by a second, smaller highlight made with the addition of a little white. It's worth trying to hit the individual knuckles and fingertips with this. For the hair, I've chosen to add just one or two very gentle light highlights with some thinned screaming skull. Once we're happy with the highlights, we're ready to add some finishing touches. The first finishing touch I've chosen to add is a thin yellow glaze. For this, I'm mixing around six brushfuls of Lamian Medium with one brushful of Lamenta's Yellow. I prefer using a medium for very thin mixes like this because the flow and coverage is better than using water. Now I've measured out the medium, I'm adding my one brushful of the yellow. I'm then going to brush this onto the green coloured fabric, the hair and the skin. The purpose of this glaze is to impart a gentle yellow tint, which helps to unify the miniature and give a gentle golden glow to the highlights. This only takes a couple of minutes to dry, after which I might add a second selective layer to boost the yellow further in the highlights. Although this is an easy step to perform, we do need to take care not to let the glaze pool in the recesses. Next, I'm going to add a little colour and definition to the lips by simply brushing on a small amount of the red shade, Karaberg Crimson. I later on decided to provide a little eyeshadow with some Celia Green Shade. Now would also be the time to paint the base, unless of course you're planning to rebase the miniature as I'm doing. To paint the base, a plain grey such as Mechanicus Standard Grey would work fine. Whether you're rebasing or not, we now need to protect the figure with a matte varnish and I'm using Tester's Doll Coat for this. To rebase the miniature, I'm using bases by MicroArt Studio. And here's how I've chosen to paint them. After spraying with a black primer, I'm using a large flat brush to provide a rough base coat of Storm Vermin fur. This will need a couple of coats, and it's okay if we leave some of the cracks an untouched black. I'm then introducing some subtle variety by painting some of the flagstones with a slightly lighter tone. This could be achieved by adding some white to the base colour, but I've chosen to use Dawnstone. I'm now going to provide a dry brush using some Terminatus stone. If you're painting a set of bases, it makes sense to batch paint them, as I'm doing here. Next, we're going to provide a wash using an equal mix of Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil. Once that's dry, I'm adding a final, lighter dry brush, once again with the Terminatus Stone focusing primarily on the most prominent edges of the base.
I'm now going to paint the leaves we can see here. You could of course paint the leaves any colour you like. I've chosen a mid-tone green base, followed with some yellow and orange highlights, to achieve a more autumnal look. For the green, I'm using Death World Forest. Take care to ensure you identify all of the leaves on the base, as it's easy to miss some, as I've done here. I'm then applying varying amounts of thinned Uriel Yellow, drawing the paint up towards the edges of the leaves. I've also chosen to add some Troll Slayer Orange to some of the edges, or random portions of the leaves, to show the effect of the leaves turning. We can then finish the base off by neatening the rim with some black paint, before spraying with the matte varnish. Now we need to remove Sindrael from her existing base with a craft knife, and select the new base we're going to replace it with. For a strong finish, we can use a hobby drill to drill up into the feet and glue in a section of wire, such as a paper clip. These can then be clipped back to around half a centimetre. After drilling counterpart holes in the base, we can superglue the miniature into position. And this completes Sindrael. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe or visit the Patreon page, where you can sign up to help me produce even more content. My special thanks go out to all of the current patrons who are so generously helping to finance this work. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Descent Journeys in the Dark. Happy painting!